All right, guys, time for another video. Remember, if you like the videos, like, subscribe, comment, share, support the channel if you want. I appreciate it. Thanks. I got asked to make a video about it. Do I think Marvel vs. Capcom 2 is a good game? Will I make a video about it? I'll just make a generalized video again about different video games, fighting games, that is, and, you know, if I think they're a good game or a bad game, and what makes a good game? What? Why would you play a game? You know, and a lot of these things I've talked about before because I don't legitimately think that there's a lot of, let's say, again, with a grain of salt, a lot of legitimately terrible games or a lot of legitimately amazing games, right? I think a lot of games kind of fall in the middle. A lot of games are just okay, like I've always said, right? It just depends on what makes you play that game. Sometimes you might play a game for nostalgia because it reminds you of something, right? Sometimes you might play a game because it's what your friends were playing. It was what was new, right? Sometimes you might play a game because I've said before, it's good to have different characters, right? Because there will always be that idea of, oh, I want to play how Ryu played in that game. Or I really liked, you know, Guy in that game. I liked how that guy played, you know what I mean? Or I said Guilty Gear Strive. Guilty Gear Strive did a good job of making new characters. Despite the game being shit, Guilty Gear Strive did a good job of, you know, doing some sort of EX, let's call them, characters, right? So there will always be a reason because you want to play that flavor of that character, right? I've also talked about some other ideas of games of better for a game to fail for being really fucking weird and trying something different that it uh, creates a discussion, right? It uh, creates a novelty kind of reason to play it, right? Better for the game to fail, quotation marks, because of that, because you'll always be able to think about that game. Like, man, that game was weird, but it was weird. You know what I mean? It wasn't like boring, right? And sort of even, you know, a different kind of shade of that is the idea of just throwing everything at a game, so to speak. You know what I mean? And, you know, you have games with lots of characters. If games have lots of characters, you're always going to be like, well, I can play all these different. There's just so much shit in this game. Maybe even if the game sucks, there's kind of a reason to play it, right? So there's lots of different reasons to play games. Sometimes there's reasons to even play games that are not legitimately good. Right. So, to, you know, to comment on a few games, do I think that Marvel vs. Capcom 2 is a good game? No, I don't. I don't think Marvel vs. Capcom 2 is a good game. Excuse me. Right. But what I do think if you were to take a, you know, a glasses half full perspective of Marvel vs. Capcom 2, I do think Marvel vs. Capcom 2 is a game that is almost congruent in its bullshit, right? Like, I don't think you can, you know, legitimately in good faith look at a game like Marvel vs. Capcom 2 and be like, wow, this game is a good game. When you think about how many bugs there are, how many glitches there are, you have to even make rules of how you can play the game. Can't can't do Gambit glitch, can't do Ruby Heart glitch, whatever. I mean, there's so many different bugs in the game. You make rules to how you can play it. I don't think you can look at a game and be like, in good faith, that's a good game. But... Where the game does succeed, maybe, from a certain perspective, would be, again, it's almost congruent in how bullshit it is. You know what I mean? Sort of like a, you know, balance in the chaos in that sense of, of sense, right? I also think Marvel's Capcom 2 has nostalgia on its side, and it, it succeeds in that uh, idea of a game being weird and so much thrown into it that there's always kind of a reason to play it just because it's kind of weird because of that right but do i think that the game is a good game i don't think marvel's capcom 2 is a good game when you look at it like that right just like i've said we can compare some other games do i think street fighter alpha 2 is a good game no street fighter alpha 2 is, is a terrible game actually i think street fighter alpha 2 is another example of a game that people have like rose colored glasses on when they look at it you know what I mean? I've made multiple videos about why Street Fighter Alpha 2 is legitimately a bad game. And no one has ever given a good argument. You, and the worst part about Alpha 2 is that when you hear people talk about Alpha 2, they talk about the game in a way that doesn't even make sense. It's like you don't even... Have you, have you played the game that you're talking about? The game doesn't work the way that you're talking about. Alpha 2 is legitimately a badly made game, Right? Where would a game like Alpha 2 succeed, though? Again, I think Alpha 2 has that sort of, you know, n nostalgia, right? You know, this idea because at the time of Alpha 2, Street Fighter as a, you know, s series was, was so dead. You know what I mean? 
there's, there's almost like this idea like, oh, but we were still playing Alpha 2. We still love Street Fighter, so we were still playing it. You know what I mean? And, and the game is a quotation marks cool game. It has a cool vibe, right? But the game itself is not a good game. And, you know, people often say, oh, you think Alpha 1 is a good game. I don't think Alpha 1 is a good game. But do I think that Alpha 2, or but do I think that Alpha 1 is a bad game? No. So, so wait, I, I, I'm, I think I might have said that wrong. Do I think Alpha 1 is a good game? No. Do I think Alpha 1 is a bad game? No. Right? You know what I mean? I think Alpha 1 is, is, is in the middle, right? Because I think if you look at Alpha 1, it's janky. It's kind of weird. You know what I mean? There's not, it doesn't, it's almost charming in its ugliness, so to speak, right? You know, but the game, if you actually play it, like I've always said, the game doesn't not make sense if you play it, right? You know what I mean? Maybe Rose, Rose doesn't make sense in the game. Rose is, you know, shadows being unblockable and that kind of stuff. And, you know, maybe I guess, you know, Saddam's unblockable roundhouse might be weird depending on the version of the game you're playing. But, you know, in general, when you play the game, the game is not jarring. There's no, there, you, you don't ever play the game and you'll be like, wow, why does that happen? The game is what it is. It's not trying to be anything it's not. Moves generally do what they do. Characters that are good make sense. You're like, oh, I can see why that character's good. I can see why that character's weaker. I can see why this move does that. The game isn't generally weird, right? You know, it's a, I would say, for the most part, competent game, right? Besides Rose. Again, Rose doesn't make sense. And, it's, you know, I guess you could say it's weird that you can roll every super. But even that's kind of like it's weird. It's not actually quotation marks bad. Besides, you know, a few characters you can roll their super, which is, you know, badly designed. But, you know, Alpha 2, legitimately badly made game, if you actually look at it. Alpha 1, in general, not, not a bad game, actually, right? People talk about Karnov's Revenge. I don't think Karno's Revenge is an amazing game. I don't think it's a it's a bad game. Again, it's just another game. I think Karno's Revenge in general is a pretty okay made game if you actually play it, right? It runs that fine line, like I said, of being, you know, kind of bullshit, kind of scrub-a-dub, but deceptively skillful. You don't look at Karno's Revenge and be like, wow, I don't get why that move works that way. A lot of things actually make sense, right? And that game, I've always said, it has two amazing characters, Mizuguchi and Karnov. It's just a shame that so many other characters are completely boring. But again, if, if you look at that game, what is legitimately bad about that game? You know, legitimately bad, I guess you could say, you know, Zazzy. Zazzy's kind of weird. You know, the, the punch thing that can kill you so easily. That That's pretty badly designed. But I guess it's a bug, right? You know what I mean? But generally, if you actually play the game and look at the game as a whole, you don't look at the game and be like, ah, oh, that doesn't make any sense. The game generally makes sense for the most part, right? You know what I mean? Look at, uh, I've talked a little bit about, you know, CVS 1 versus CVS 2. I think there's actually an argument you could make, say that CVS 1 is a better game than CVS 2. Again, are any of these games amazing or bad you, you know what i mean but cvs2 is another game that i think people have nostalgia for right because there's another kind of thing like ah we're not going to get any good games for a while we're not going to get any street fighters this is our last thing you know what i mean but you know cvs2 can you know can you say a game where you have such a, a bug like role canceling that is such a you know has such an effect and control over the game can you say that's a good game can you say a game like CVS2 where something like S Groove, you know, you just have this one groove that is almost completely useless out, besides outside of almost completely niche, right? You know what I mean? Can you see that's a well-designed game? CVS2 is another game where it was so weird. Like in, in CVS1, you know what I mean? Fireballs started becoming faster again. Dragon punches were dragon punches. You had a lot more links again, like old school, you know, fighting games. Moves felt powerful. Moves felt good. You know what I mean? You know, the argument against CVS2 is maybe that it was a unfinished game or whatever, something like that. Some people say it's an unfinished game. Not enough characters, whatever. We want more, right? But if you look at CVS1, look at all the good parts about CVS1, right? CVS1, CVS1 in general, 
You don't play CVS1, you're like, wow, why does that move do that? Why does that move do that? CVS1 also has a lot of kind of fun gimmicks, right? You know what I mean? Yeah, most people probably pick, you know what I mean? Capcom Groove, but it wasn't so completely unbalanced that you never saw, you know, SNK Groove, you know what I mean? Charge up, whatever. You had Iori doing his gimmicks with his supers. You know what I mean? As, as, you know, you had a lot of fast supers. A lot of characters had fast level one supers that always kind of like, you know, like, I could play SNK Groove because level ones juggle so easily in that game, right? A lot of fast level ones. Iori's level three wine glass, you know what I mean? There's a lot, you know, as much as people might say, hey, let's say, you know, people are like, oh, well, Guile and Nakaru were too powerful in CVS1. Well, those are two CV, those are two ratio two characters. Then you also see people like, oh, ratio one characters are too good. Well, pick which one. You know what I mean? The, the fact is, if you look at CVS1, there's a lot of different characters that are kind of usable. You know what I mean? Look at Ryu. Ryu's a decent character in that game. He's got the gimmick of the Shinshoryuken, right? You know, almost instantly fucking kills you in that game. It feels powerful, right? Look at gimmicks like Blanca with his fucking throw into super. There's a lot of kind of weird shit in that. And it's the characters that kind of make you feel special in that game. And I've said that before. Characters kind of make you play a game a lot of times, right? Even though a lot of games focus on the system, you know what I mean? The system can kind of make or break a game, right? So it's good when you have characters that can always, you know encourage you to come back and play the game and you know cvs1 I, I think you know one of the only reasons people don't actually play cvs1 and again i think cvs1 is a much better vibe than cvs2 is because cvs2 is kind of like oh it's the last game in the series right so oh it was our last hurrah this nostalgia you know remembering the past oh more is better you know what i mean but again that's kind of get what i'm getting into a lot of times people just play games because they're like oh more is better sometimes right or this nostalgia factor because again i think if you logically objectively look at cvs2 versus cvs1 just as a game i know cvs2 has more shit you can do in it right i know there's more characters but is it a legitimately better made game i don't think you can actually say it's a legitimately better made game than cvs1 you know what i mean CVS2 also has that fucking terrible thing. A lot of moves, you know, they, they played it almost safe with the game. A lot of moves, they, you know, Dragon Punches became weaker again. Fireball slower, which I'll, I'll never understand, you know what I mean? We all, oh, we added rolls, which were in CVS1 as well, right? We have rolls, we have all these different ways around Fireballs, but let's make Fireballs weaker again. You know what I mean? Let's make Dragon Punches weaker again, which I've made videos about this before. Name me a game, even a game like, say, I, I mentioned it, Karnov's Revenge, where everyone has, it feels like everyone has a fucking dragon punch that is obnoxious, right? Even, you know, Karnov's Revenge. You know what I mean? Even old school Street Fighter, we think of, you know, all the powerful dragon punches, right? Even in these most powerful games, as many people that you will hear that they hate dragon punches in video games, I can't think of any fucking video game that has legitimately fully invincible dragon punches where you would only use the dragon punch. Even in old school Street Fighter, you still anti-air with normal moves. That, that's like kind of like something, you know, a lot of so-called smart people don't want to talk about. It doesn't matter what fucking video game you're talking about. You know what I mean? You always still use your normals to anti-air. Different options for different things. Dragon punches are never your one option kind of button, right? You know what I mean? Even when they're totally invincible, you still use different moves. You know what I mean? Believe it or not, right? Believe it or not, it's true, right? CVS2, you know, started taking away moves, made moves feeling weaker and everything. I just think CVS2 is kind of boring, you know? I mean, even though you can give weird examples like this thing of Kim. You know, it, CVS2 almost has kind of that fucking, you know, oh, this game is such amazing footsies, whatever. And then you think of like, you know, oh, Alpha 2, sure. That's why my moves are punishable. So many moves have no fucking purpose. You know, an example is, oh, using a random example, right? When Capcom was remaking some of these SNK characters, right? Say they made Kim. They made his Hangitsan go over low fireballs, right? You know, his Hangitsan no longer comboed unless it was a little kick one. And the hard kick one no longer comboed, right? But what they did with the move is they made it go over fireballs and they gave it some kind of a different utility 
that you don't actually use it for in King of Fighters. And you're like, oh, that's kind of interesting, right? And then you play CVS 2, where it's almost like they went towards every move and they just removed so many frames from the move or some shit like that. Made so many moves, just a little bit weaker here, a little bit weaker here. And they didn't actually think it out. And so Kim says hard kick, you know, Han gets on whatever. Even though now it has a different utility that it did in King of Fighters that it can go over fireballs and stuff like that. Why is the move punishable on hit? I don't know if many people even remember that. There's weird moves that are punishable on hit in CVS 2 for some reason. It's like they just didn't fucking think it out. It, you know, CVS 2, again, I think CVS 2 is a game, if you actually look at it, it's actually not that amazing of a game. I don't know if I want to say it's as bad as Alpha 2, but I don't think it's actually, I can't, you know, I think about it, I don't know if I can in good faith say it's better than CVS 1, to be honest with you, right? You know, in general, I think Guilty, you know, to be honest, you know, they're not my favorite games, but, you know, to be honest, maybe not Guilty Your X, right? And then once we got to, like, Accent Core, you know, especially Plus R, you know, because X had, you know, Faultless Defense Canceling, I don't think you can say any game with that is legitimately a good game, right? It's not digestible to the consumer, you know, it's just not, it, it, I think any perspective of it, it's not good, right? And then once you get to games like, you know, Accent Core and Plus R, you know, Guilty Gear kind of, you know, they kind of, it felt like they're running out of ideas with these Mugen moves. But I think Guilty Gear, I've always said this, Guilty Gear has a lot of goodwill. And if you actually look at Guilty Gear, I think you can look at a lot of these Guilty Gear games, you know, for a period of time. And, you know, maybe Slash isn't as, you know, interesting or fun. You know what I mean? But if you look at XX, you know, R, you know what I mean, Reload you know, Slash, and, you know, to a lesser extent, you know, Accent Core, and then blah, blah. I guess you got to pick and choose. You know what I mean? But e even Plus R, you know what I mean? I think it's becoming a little stale, and I don't like everything. But Guilty Gear is a game, when I look at it, I always think Guilty Gear has a lot of goodwill in it. You know what I mean? If you look at it, it's like, I'm tempted to say that the Guilty Gear games are generally pretty well-made games, if you look at them, right? They aren't I don't know. I, I, I like. I, like I said, when I look at when I look at Guilty Gear games again, maybe not X. And you know, once we get start getting to X and Core and all this kind of stuff, and you know, whatever. I think if you look at those games, it's like, man, they're pretty. They tried. I feel like you could say they tried, right? I, I mean, there's a there's a good amount of goodwill in those games, actually, right? Again, I've talked about old school Street Fighter. You know what I mean? You know, Super Turbo. You know, Super Turbo is almost amazing and it's, you know, I've made so many videos about Super Turbo and why it's a, a, an amazing game, you know, culturally, psychologically, you know, from so many different perspectives, Super Turbo is actually a very interesting game. You know, maybe I don't agree with everything in it, but, you know, there's a, God, I, I might almost be blinded, you know what I mean? Because it's so, Super Turbo is such a fascinating game, I think, if you actually think about it. You know, from some of those game theory videos I talk about, you know, just the transitional period of where fighting games were. What a great kind of a perfect storm of a fighting game almost from a certain perspective if you look at it through a certain lens, right? But, you know, in, in other words, you know, like I said, I don't think, you know, I don't even think Dead or Alive is a terrible game. I think the Dead or Alive games, you know, many of them are fun games for what they are. They don't strike me as terrible games, right? So... You know, at, at the end of the day, you know what I mean? What are good games? What are bad games? You know what I mean? It's hard to say legitimately good games. It's hard to say legitimately bad games, right? But some games, like I said, I, I do think, just because I asked about Marvel 2, I don't think you can legitimately say Marvel vs. 2 is a good game. I think you'd have to lean to saying it's a bad game. But you could say from a glasses half full perspective that the game is congruent almost in its bullshit that makes the game acceptable in, in a sense, right? Alpha 2, I, I think I've always said Alpha 2 is legitimately a bad game. No one's ever had a good argument for me. Al Alpha 2 is a legitimately bad game, you know. I can see why people like it though, right? You know, I can see that it's a fun game, you know what I mean, from a certain perspective. And it's a good vibe. I can see the nostalgia reason why people would like it, but objectively speaking, to say Alpha 2 is a good game, a well-made game is is ludicrous, right? But 
This video is getting long. I'm if you like, there's like, sub, silly, comment. Share, support the channel if you want. I appreciate it. Thanks. The end.